Over $40 billion worth of gold is recycled every single year. That's more than the GDP of over 100 countries, and almost none of it comes from mines. Instead, this gold is pulled from the forgotten corners of our lives, old electronics, broken jewelry, dental fillings, and industrial scrap. Gold doesn't rust, it doesn't decay, and it doesn't disappear. Almost every ounce ever mined is still somewhere on Earth. But how do we recover it? What does it take to extract pure gold from a tangle of circuit boards and tangled chains? From shredding and sorting to chemical separation and electrolysis, this is how over $40 billion worth of gold is recycled from scrap every year. Gold scrap comes from everywhere. The most visible source is jewelry, old rings, broken chains, out-of-style pieces, or heirlooms sold for cash. But that's just the beginning. Recyclers also collect massive quantities of e-waste, smartphones, laptops, motherboards, CPUs, and even old VCRs. A single ton of electronic scrap can contain more gold than one ton of ore from a modern gold mine. In fact, while a high-grade gold mine yields about 5 grams of gold per ton, e-waste can yield up to 800 grams per ton, over 150 times as much. Industrial facilities add to the stream with gold-coated connectors, aerospace components, medical implants, laboratory instruments, and even x-ray films. And then there's dentistry. Yes, those gold crowns and fillings still hold real value. On a global scale, dental gold recycling alone is worth over $500 million per year. Each year, over 1,100 tons of gold is recycled worldwide roughly a third of all gold demand. The U.S. alone recycles more than 200 tons annually. In India, gold is frequently passed down across generations, but when financial pressures mount, much of that family gold re-enters the recycling stream. In some countries, specialized gold buying events or mobile gold appraisal vans roam through cities offering instant cash. These networks feed directly into the global gold recycling supply chain. Once collected, the first step is triage. Not all gold-bearing materials are equal. Jewelry and coins go one way, electronics another, and industrial scrap into a third. Workers manually sort items by type, white gold, yellow gold, gold-plated, or gold alloy. They also separate out obvious non-gold materials, glass, plastics, and base metals. To assist, Many facilities use XRF X-ray fluorescence analyzers that can identify metal composition instantly without damaging the item. This helps separate high-purity gold from plated or low-carat items. In major facilities, conveyor belts move materials under robotic arms equipped with AI-powered recognition tools that improve accuracy and speed. At this stage, jewelers often melt down 18-carat and 14-karat gold into bars called doré for sale to refiners, while recyclers shred e-waste into fine bits for further processing. Gold-plated items are particularly tricky. They contain only a thin surface layer of gold, which makes extraction more complex and costly. Meanwhile, items like antique watches, luxury fountain pens, or custom electronics are sometimes set aside for manual disassembly to preserve rare or valuable components. E-waste is then fed into industrial shredders, which tear apart phones, circuit boards, and cables into chunks the size of cornflakes. These machines can shred over 10 tons of electronics per hour, reducing entire pallets of devices into manageable fragments. Next, the material is crushed and milled into even finer particles, sometimes down to powder. Magnets pull out steel, eddy currents extract aluminum, and air separators lift away plastics and fibers. What remains is a rich concentrate of copper, tin, silver, and gold, all tangled together on a microscopic scale. This concentrate is called concentrated metallic dust, and it's one of the most valuable intermediate materials in the recycling chain. For jewelry and coins, larger pieces are melted directly into dory bars, which still contain other metals like silver, zinc, and copper. These must be removed through chemical refining. At this stage, the gold is still far from pure, but it's been separated from most of its physical shell. It's ready for a transformation that mirrors alchemy, 
turning mixed, dirty metal into something nearly elemental. Now comes the heart of the process, leaching. For electronic waste, this means submerging the shredded material in a bath of chemicals, most often a cyanide or aqua regia solution, a mix of nitric and hydrochloric acid. These chemicals dissolve the precious metals into liquid form. Gold, along with silver and platinum group metals, detaches from the base metals and enters the solution. For dory bars, the refining uses chlorination or acid parting, which strips away the non-gold metals. Chlorine gas is bubbled through molten metal to form metal chlorides, which separate and float away. This stage is dangerous and heavily regulated. Toxic fumes and acid waste require advanced ventilation, scrubbers, and containment systems. Workers wear full protective suits, gloves, and respirators. Some facilities even have closed-loop systems that reclaim fumes and reuse the chemicals, significantly reducing hazardous waste. In regions with less regulation, informal gold recycling can release deadly mercury and cyanide into rivers and soil, damaging ecosystems for decades. That's why certified recycling facilities are essential for minimizing environmental harm. Once the gold is in solution, it must be recovered. In chemical baths, refiners use a process called precipitation, where a reducing agent like sodium metabosulfite or zinc powder causes the gold to fall out of the liquid. The gold settles as a fine brown or black powder at the bottom of the tank. This is filtered, rinsed, and dried to remove any lingering chemicals. At this point, it's called gold sponge and is typically 98 to 99% pure. To get to investment-grade purity, 99.99% or higher, recyclers often perform electro-refining. This involves passing an electric current through a solution containing the gold sponge and an electrolyte of gold chloride. Pure gold plates onto a cathode, atom by atom. It's slow, it's delicate, but the result is astonishing. Bars and grains of ultra-pure gold, bright yellow and flawless. Each run of electro-refining can take 24 to 72 hours, depending on batch size and purity levels. The final step is forming. Molten gold is poured into graphite molds to form bars, or atomized into droplets for making grains and shot. Each bar is weighed and stamped with purity, weight, and a serial number. High-value bars are often sealed in tamper-proof packaging and tracked with blockchain technology to ensure traceability. Investment-grade gold is usually produced in 1-kilogram bars or 400-ounce London Good Delivery Bars, which can be worth over $800,000 each. These gold products are sold to jewelers, electronics manufacturers, mints, and investors around the world. Some are melted again into coins or luxury items. Others are stored in vaults in Zurich, London, or Hong Kong, held as a hedge against inflation and financial crisis. Recycled gold is virtually indistinguishable from newly mined gold. That means it re-enters the global economy seamlessly, helping to meet demand without additional environmental damage. Some companies now offer recycled gold-only certification for consumers and jewelers wanting to avoid supporting new mining. This new market segment is growing, especially in the luxury goods space. Recycling gold isn't just profitable. It's critical. It takes 20 tons of rock to mine just one ounce of gold. But recycling that same ounce from electronics? Less than a kilogram of material. Recycling gold uses 95% less energy, creates 97% less toxic waste, and reduces greenhouse gas emissions by over 99% compared to mining. In 2023 alone, gold recycling offset over 400 million metric tons of CO2 equivalent emissions and the opportunity is growing. Globally, we generate over 57 million tons of e-waste annually. Less than 20% of it is formally recycled. Hidden in that waste, billions in untapped gold. Experts estimate that over $10 billion in recoverable precious metals is lost every year due to improper disposal of electronics. If more countries invested in advanced e-waste recycling, that number could drop dramatically. Japan, for example, used recycled gold from old electronics to produce the metals for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, a powerful symbol of sustainability and modern recycling. Large multinational companies are beginning to partner directly with recyclers, 
to ensure that precious metals in their products are recovered responsibly. Some tech giants now include design features that make disassembly and recovery easier, improving recycling efficiency. Environmental watchdogs are also advocating for extended producer responsibility EPR laws, which require manufacturers to ensure their products are recyclable and actually get recycled at end of life. So that's how over $40 billion worth of gold is recycled every year. From forgotten jewelry boxes to obsolete phones, from acid baths to atomic plating, it's a process of precision, power, and purity. Gold never vanishes. We just have to find it again. Recycling gold isn't just a clever business. It's a necessary one. It conserves resources, protects the environment, and turns yesterday's waste into tomorrow's wealth. And as global demand for electronics, renewable tech, and green finance continues to rise, the importance of sustainable gold recycling will only grow. If you found this journey fascinating, subscribe for more in-depth factory stories. And let us know in the comments, what should we uncover next? Thanks for watching.